uh, well, there are many helpful spiritual practices in our Catholic tradition. And one of them is to take a short saying from the Bible, uh, from the Psalms or the Gospels, for example, and uh, to say it, repeat it, inside oneself, uh, to mull it over, or it's like uh, putting something in the slow cooker. And when we do that, it can surprise us uh, how a few short words can grow so much meaning. He has hidden many treasures in his word, said one of the saints, so that each of us is enriched as we meditate on it. Often, uh, some saying or verse of the Psalms or saying of the Lord in the gospel can often speak to our daily life, the situations we're in, in unexpected ways. And not only that, but because it's God's words we're cooking, they bring the Lord himself before us. And we can be left awed, actually, wowed by who he is and by the power of his word. Well, these last few days, the phrase that has been exercising me is the one we heard at the very beginning of today's gospel. Do not think I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Or to boil it down more briefly, I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. I have not come, says the Lord, to abolish, but to fulfill. Well, here's some food for our souls. Here's a piece of bread given us, so let's try and taste it, savor it, and take it into ourselves. I have come, says the Lord. Well, Jesus quite often begins a statement like this. Uh, we can remember some of them. I have come not to call the righteous, but sinners, or I have come that they may have life and have it to the full, or I have come not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. I have come. It's actually like a flashing light or a flag being waved to signal what comes next. And when our Lord said this, he didn't mean well, I've come to your synagogue today, or I have come from uh, Nazareth to Capernaum to speak to you today. No, I have come, comes from a deeper place than that. It springs from Jesus' own self-awareness. He is saying, I have come from above, from my Father, I have been sent by him as his beloved son, as his messenger, with something to do and something to say. And when he says, I have come uh, not to do X, but to do Y, like today, not to abolish, but fulfill, when we know we are about to hear one of his signature statements. And so today, at the very beginning of today's gospel, in this Sermon on the Mount that we're listening to over several weeks, the lights are flashing and the flags are waving. I have come, he says. Now, meaning, first off, not to abolish the law of Moses, not to take away the commandments you've already heard, but to fulfill them. Now, we know from many episodes in the Gospels that our Lord took issue with the way the experts of the day, the scribes and the Pharisees, interpreted Moses' law. And this would get him into much trouble. But he did not have an issue with the law itself, with the Ten Commandments especially. No, he only wanted to bring out their full potential. So, 
the commandment says, don't kill, don't murder, he said, well, this also means don't hate. It means do what you can to defend and develop your own life and the lives of others. I mean, if we make a donation at the present time to the poor people in, in Turkey and Syria, we are keeping that commandment, do not kill. We are living out its deeper meaning. That's to fulfill the law. So don't commit adultery, says the Lord. Well, that calls us, says Jesus, to be inwardly faithful to our married partner, to honor marriage, to keep our hearts pure of lustful thoughts, and so on. But, so that's the first meaning. I have come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And he himself fulfilled it in his life. Jesus was the perfect Jew, the only Jew who ever kept the law in its fullness. But there's more, because in the gospel, Jesus says, I have come I, not to abolish the law and the prophets. Now, that phrase, the law and the prophets, was shorthand for the whole of the Jewish scriptures, for what we call the Old Testament. The Old, so Jesus is saying, I have not come just because I'm new, so new, I haven't come to abolish what is old. The Old Testament contains the first unfolding of God's plan from, scripture, from creation onwards, and in the prophets especially, looks beyond uh, to its fulfillment. It's like the first half of a sentence. It's like the first act of a play to follow, or it's a bit like the orchestra tuning up before the symphony begins. It wouldn't be, make much sense to abolish the orchestra or to miss the first act or to drop the first half of the sentence. That's why it, uh, in a church today, most days, most times, we read the Old Testament as well. There have been Christians who said, as Christians, we shouldn't read the Old Testament. We should, we should just stick to the New. The New is all lovely, and uh, the Old Testament's rather horrible with battles and things like that, so we should drop that. But the church has always said, no, no, we must listen to the whole sentence, the whole story. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill, he says. And really, the whole of our Lord, everything that he's about, he's, he's poured into that very simple sentence. And what is true of biblical history is true of our humanity, of ourselves and our lives. Because if we think of ourselves, we're woven of three threads. We've got our common humanity, we share with every other human being, past, present, and future. We're not robots, and we're not chimpanzees. We've got our genderedness as male or female, and we've got our unique individuality, these three coming together in each of us. And I have come, says Christ, not to abolish any of these, but to complete and fulfillment Think of what he made of Peter the fisherman and the girl from Nazareth called Mary. Or we can think of, as people like to these days, we can think of our gender, our masculinity, or femininity. He doesn't want to unman or unwoman us. He makes the love and fruitfulness of man and woman into the, uh, the sacrament of marriage, grafting it into God's loving. Or think of the single or those called to a celibate life and consecrated chastity. That vocation, too, doesn't abolish our gender, but fulfills it in a further way. Perhaps 
each of us should, we are the ser- listening to the Sermon on the Mount, the Mount, it's on the Mount of the Beatitudes, is still there above the, above the Lake of Galilee. Imagine that we are there and listening and think of Jesus saying this to us personally, either when we're young and bursting with desires uh, and fears and full of schemes and hopes and everything, or when we're aging and can see life's end before us, or when we're in the middle and just busy, busy. There may be people, this is what Jesus is saying, there may be people who consider you a waste of space, but I have not come to abolish you. I've come to fulfill you, to bring to fruition your mind and your heart and your body too. In my word, I come to teach and guide you. In my sacraments, I come to wash and anoint and feed you. In my church, I have come to surround you with brothers and sisters. In the providences of your daily life, I am shepherding you. In the Holy Spirit, I have come to refresh and inspire you. Even to your old age, I am he, says the Lord in Isaiah, and to gray hairs I will carry you. I have made and I will bear. I will carry and will save. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I am with you with my crook and my staff to comfort you. Yes, I have come. Let's say it each of us say it to ourselves. Imagine our Lord saying this to me. I have come not to abolish you, but to fulfill you, whatever the difficulties. Even when we are dying, our Lord is saying, I have come not to abolish you, but to fulfill you. Already at a level deeper than your feelings. I'm fulfilling you, filling you full, and what I will do to you, and indeed to the whole of creation, to every blade of grass and every bird and every tree. Well, well, you really have no idea what I will do, or what St. Paul said, things no eye has seen and no ear heard, things beyond the mind of man, all that God has prepared for those who love you. I have come not to abolish you, but to fulfill you.